A pioneer in 5G technology. We are in the power of this system. It is the most important part of the world. It is the most important part of the world. It is the most important part of the world. Huawei. Announcements of Huawei's... Of Huawei's... Technology company Huawei. Huawei is something that's very dangerous. You look at what they've done from a security standpoint, from a military standpoint, it's very dangerous. A global banking giant. The HSBC has a, a deep and special bond with Hong Kong. We were founded in Hong Kong in, in 1865. We were founded to support trade between China and the world. Once partners, now strangers. What really happened? Obviously, the story has not been fully told. issued an arrest warrant for Huawei's chief financial officer, Meng Wanzhou. This is not simply a case about the arrest of one woman or just one woman. A Vancouver judge has released Meng Wanzhou after guarantors put up millions for bail, and she agreed to pay for 24-7 monitoring. Meng allegedly committed fraud by lying to banks. The decision is likely to sour Canada's already bad relations with China. The civil suit calls the circumstances of Meng's arrest a serious violation of her rights. Meng's lawyer, Scott Fenton, argued prosecutors made submissions irreconcilable for law of fraud. The judge ruled that double criminality was met because the conduct Miss Meng is accused of, the making of intentionally false statements, meets the essence of fraud. Supposedly, it's all about a meeting in a restaurant. On August the 22nd, 2013, Meng Wanzhou met with Alan Thomas, HSBC's then deputy head of global banking for Asia Pacific, in a restaurant in Hong Kong. During that meeting, Meng made a PowerPoint presentation about Huawei's business links in Iran through a company called Skycom and Huawei's efforts in compliance with the U.S. sanctions. Some five years later, that presentation became the key evidence in a U.S. extradition case against her, alleging that she committed fraud against HSBC and other banks, exposing them to both economic and reputational risks. Little is known about the details of this meeting between Meng through her translator and Thomas. According to Reuters, an internal probe by HSBC years later found the meeting to have been at Huawei's request. I reached out to the Reuters journalist behind the report. Hello? Hello, is that Ms. Freyfeld? Hi, um, this is Lu Xin. I'm a journalist with uh, CGTN, China's national television. A written reply from Reuters confirms that the journalists stand by their reporting. HSBC, in a written reply on July the 16th, 2020, says it would be inappropriate for them to comment as they are not a party to Meng Wanzhou's case. The statement adds HSBC provided objective facts to U.S. authorities. But was the meeting really requested by Huawei? A person in the know agreed to talk to me on conditions of anonymity. One of the details that has been regarded as a fact 
was that this meeting was initiated at the request of Huawei. Was this detail accurate? To my knowledge, the 2023年的这个会是汇丰邀请邀请华为，然后要要见孟晚舟，这是我这边了解到的情况。所以我觉得刚才你那边所陈述的那个内容应该是存在这个呃偏差的。on what basis do you make that statement? Was this communication done via telephone or via email? Meng Wanzhou is the chief financial officer of Huawei, not the chief legal or compliance officer. It could make sense for her to talk to HSBC, but compliance matters are not under her portfolio. By the time the presentation was made, she had no direct relationship with Skycom either. However, the circumstances, Meng made a Chinese language presentation to Thomas through the translator. The English version of that presentation was later delivered to HSBC at Thomas's request. Meng told Thomas Skycom was a business partner of Huawei in Iran. She also talked about Huawei's business activities in that country and its trade compliance program related to U.S. sanctions. Allegedly, HSBC decided to retain Huawei as a customer based on her presentation. We don't need to torture ourselves. Obviously, this meeting was instigated not by Huawei. All right? It doesn't make any sense. If I'm the bank and I'm asking, I would ask you to send it to me prior to the meeting. So it, I'm prepared to discuss it when we're there. What could have been the motivations for HSBC to request such a meeting? In 2012, U.S. prosecutors charged HSBC with four crimes, including money laundering in Mexico, involving at least 880 million U.S. dollars. The bank was fined 1.9 billion U.S. dollars and signed a five-year deferred prosecution agreement, or DPA, to self-rectify and cooperate with judicial investigations. This was the third time in a decade that HSBC had been punished for similar offenses. In the Anglo-Saxon legal system, there is where we call bargaining. That means where for uh, HSBC, where certainly it realizes that it did something wrong. However, in order to reduce the responsibility it should be held and then it preferred to do something where as a deal where with the US where prosecution. So that is quite possible. US prosecutors accused Meng of lying in order to obtain financial services from HSBC. According to new evidence provided by Huawei, HSBC, including senior management, was aware of Huawei's business activities in Iran through Skycom. This, Huawei argues, shows HSBC had known the risks associated with servicing Skycom. We can see that the bank closed the bank's account. So, from 呃，这点上可以看到呢，银行应当知道，呃，华为和兴通公司是他们自己的客户的。呃，我们呃看到这个呃汇丰银行提供呃相应的证据，也证明了呃这一点吧。And so there wasn't any bad activity or bad mind on her part, because that's a matter of public record which the bank would have known about uh, previously. The relationship between Huawei and Meng with Skycom was outlined in the PowerPoint. 
Somehow, that piece of information was left out in the summary of the PPT by U.S. prosecutors provided to the Canadian courts. What could have been on HSBC's agenda to ask Meng Wanzhou to provide information they already knew? The HSBC has a, a deep and special bond with Hong Kong. We were founded in Hong Kong in, in 1865. We were founded to support trade between China and the world. However, HSBC's compliance history has not been a perfect one. From 2006 to 2010, for instance, HSBC Bank USA failed to implement an anti-money laundering program capable of adequately monitoring suspicious transactions and activities from HSBC Group affiliates, particularly HSBC Mexico. As a result, at least 881 million US dollars in drug trafficking proceeds were laundered through the system. HSBC absolutely knew the risks of the business it pursued, yet it ignored specific, obvious warnings. Its failures allowed hundreds of millions of dollars in drug money to pass through its unattended gates. In December 2012, the U.S. Department of Justice announced enforcement actions on HSBC. A deferred prosecution agreement was signed between the two sides. HSBC committed to improve compliance and cooperate fully with investigators. A compliance monitor was also appointed to the bank. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Monitor's 2016 annual report to the Department of Justice found instances of potential financial crime and questioned whether HSBC was meeting all of its DPA obligations. In late 2016, HSBC began to conduct an internal probe of Huawei. In February 2017, U.S. Departments of Treasury, Commerce, Homeland Security and Justice reportedly gathered in Washington, D.C. and talked about how they were moving forward against Huawei, including its relationship with HSBC. It's reported that some time later, HSBC helped authorities obtain evidence of links between Skycom and Huawei, including the PowerPoint. Information provided by HSBC to the Justice Department was provided pursuant to formal demand, including grand jury subpoena or other obligation to provide information pursuant to a deferred prosecution agreement or similar legal obligation. Did HSBC breach its obligation to its clients? Is HSBC supposed to turn over that documentation? The answer is yes, but what I think that the defense Defense lawyers from Mung Wing Joe could easily uh, uh, argue that HSBC was fully aware that there was nothing in that presentation that would be uh, misleading because it was a matter of public record what the connection is uh, between Mung Wing Joe and, and Skycom. It was a matter of public record uh, that didn't have anything to do with the PowerPoint presentation. In the DPA with U.S. authorities, HSBC is obliged to cooperate fully with the department in any and all investigations. The cooperation is subject to applicable laws and regulations and the attorney-client and attorney work product privileges. The DPA demands HSBC's full cooperation involving the roles of HSBC parties such as officers, directors, employees and agents charged. Clients are not explicitly mentioned. Any 但是没有必要以牺牲客户的利益为代价
反正他这个角色呢是很不光彩的，最起码呢也非常不道德。In December 2017, HSBC escaped prosecution after it was found to have lived up to all its commitments to improve control and compliance measures. The bank is now listed as one of four victim institutions in the U.S. indictment against Meng Wanzhou. No, not one single one or any of them inter uh, interdicted at an airport and held uh, uh, based on some warrant. No. They were all given a pass. Not one of them is in jail. We're talking about criminality on a vast scale. And now you understand what was HSBC's driving force here. What they wanted to do was to hand something over to the US government, to the Department of Justice, that would curry favor. The PowerPoint presentation became the key evidence of US indictment of fraud against Meng. They allege she made misrepresentations about the company's links in Iran and compliance issues, exposing HSBC to risks. But when submitting the PPTS evidence to a Canadian court, an important part was left out. The part about Huawei's efforts to comply with the U.S. sanctions. I talked to the chief legal officer, also the chief compliance officer of Huawei, to find out more about their efforts in this regard. Huawei 在合规方面与美国相关的部门之间有过什么样的沟通，或者有着什么样的沟通？华为呃，致力于合规的全球的全面的管理，呃，而且我们从很早的时候就开始在这方面进行很大的投入。我们有呃超过一千五百人的队伍来从事全球合规管理的工作。呃，合规运营是华为经营的一个基本理念，是我们高层的一个基本理念。其实，关于合规的有关的这个贸易合规方面的这个有关的活动，其实我们呃，在这个很早以前就一直呃跟美国商务部进行报告，包括我们的相关的这些微量测算的规则，我们对美国法律新颁布法律的这个理解。其实我们一直在跟呃美国商务部做报告，呃，而且我本人也拜访过几次美国商务部，对。嗯，这个报告这种沟通的过程从什么时候开始到现在还持续吗？零九年到一零年左右的这段时间开始，一般我们大概每呃一年半两年左右，一年多一点，这个我们会去报告一次。这个持续到呃二零一六年。因为二零一六年，呃，美国商务部已经开始调查了，我们就不太方便、嗯。那么你们每次去报告，呃，美方的反应是什么呢？他们的回馈是什么呢？他们跟我们都进行了一些这个澄清和沟通，因为都是技术层面的东西，呃，内容。但我们具体讨论的都是一些技术细节，比如说微量测算的规则啊，比如说这个他们 CIS 的法案的一些解释啊，等等这些具体的。这个这个技术问题，也就是说到二零一六年，美国开始调查华为这个时间点，呃，在此之前，华为并没有在合规的问题上得到美国有关方面的警告啊，或者说这个要求你们改，或者是更加合规的这样的一些提示，没有。In an interview in June 2018, U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross confirmed that Huawei was in compliance. I've heard a lot of the rumors about Huawei. Uh, as of the moment, I don't believe that our department has found any violations of Huawei. However, eight months later, the U.S. made a completely different assessment, while joining others in announcing the U.S. charges against Huawei and Meng Wanzhou. For years, Chinese firms have broken our export laws and undermine sanctions, often using U.S. financial systems to facilitate their illegal activities. This will end. The Trump administration continues to be tougher on those who violate our sanctions and our export control laws than any administration in history. Why the U-turn? Obviously, this came from the very top, 
You have a statement by Donald Trump saying that this is a card that he intended to use in his trade negotiations. If I think it's good for what will certainly be the largest trade deal ever made, I would certainly intervene if I thought it was necessary. This extradition request is based on the enforcement by the United States of its unilateral sanctions against Iran to try to force Iran to renegotiate the nuclear deal. These are not United Nations sanctions. They are U.S. sanctions. Canada doesn't agree in terms of foreign policy with this strategy. Furthermore, these proceedings are conveniently addressed against a commercial competitor of some U.S. interests, Huawei, so there is a lot of good reasons to look at this case with suspicion. This is politically motivated. I mean, someone objective would say, would like to say yes. I mean, this is this intended death by a thousand pesos of Huawei in the United States. Uh, this is a great way to get a bit of uh, competition. This is not a game of go fish, right? The idea that we, we are supposedly as civilized, more civilized than we were today, than we were in the past, how is that possible when in essence he's kidnapped her, all right, is holding her for ransom against her father and the Chinese government and her own liberty for his own political gain? The sanctions in the act was quite clear. There are no condition of qualifications. Can the government do something? We say it certainly can. It has the legal authority, always respecting the rule of law and the independence of the courts, to intervene now and put a stop to this extradition proceeding. In the building where Meng Wanzhou used to work, there is a library which she helped set up. At the entrance, a guest book caught my attention. Many employees left messages for her, wishing her well. One such message reads, Wan Zhou, which literally translates into late boat in Chinese, please come back soon.